have to be fast now. Okay. This my, my okay. My microphone is working. So, I uh, yes. Hi everyone. Uh, today I will be speaking about my experiment on using the WebRTC native API to do a gateway. So I will start by, by speaking a little bit more about where I'm coming from and why I think this may be uh, really valuable. If so in the past years, uh, in the past year I've been uh, working in Seattle for Flowroute and I'm mainly focusing on uh, scaling SIP signaling. But the four years before that, I was working uh, at Libon. And my main uh, role was to ensure audio quality. We were monitoring it well and that there, if there was any degradation, we would be able to identify why. And there was millions of calls, so there was, it was a really good uh, place to, to verify what is going on on Android devices, because Libon was a, a soft phone running on Android. It was using a build-on communication lint phone under the hood. So I was mainly working on the, the native part of it. Great piece of code, uh, media streamer. I became expert with it, and I learned many things uh, while using it. I worked with other people like Dragosh, and uh, Libon was kind of uh, very rich because it was founded by Orange, and there were, <laughs> they were a ring specialist, and it was a really good experience. So, yeah, then uh, what is the WebRTC gateway? I think there was already a lot of discussion about it. So what it is doing, I mean, there may be different uh, RTC gateway doing different things. I guess one of the big differences, are you transcoding or are you relaying packet? Because you can gateway without dealing with the media. Here I'm highlighting the fact that what I have in mind is to take care of benefit from the QoS best effort that WebRTC can provide with their jitter buffer management and with their bandwidth estimator. So all the other details we can, uh, I think they were already discussed uh, briefly by others. Uh, so let's, let's uh, explain why I believe uh, WebRTC is so great, based on my experience. Uh, the last update they did, they were saying that from now on there, there, are, there is a switch and there is more and more people using WebRTC to do native uh, application out of browser. And they do embrace this idea. Uh, and we have seen such a great example in the previous uh, Matrix demonstration, amazing stuff. Um, they also are accepted to, to provide, um, to uh, expand the API to, to, to let you inject your own codec, non-free codec. They don't want to deal with licensing, but uh, the API will support the fact that you could use uh, any codec you want now. I, I haven't looked at this part of the API. And their mission is also seems to be aligned with not only browser kind of stuff. Uh, so they are really expert on Android mobile devices. They are optimizing. Most of the code is optimized. Uh, also, we greatly benefit from Opus, which is also optimized for uh, AMR and other CPU. So the, uh, in terms of what they are doing, I think they, they may agree with this kind of usage, and they may be able to make it support it in some ways. Uh, now, uh, yeah, other things that are really great in WebRTC is they do know many things about signal processing. I don't know the team or the, the engineers, but what I know is that they are doing great things. And the proof is uh, some of their code is, has been stripped from WebRTC and used in other free software, which is great. Like PJ Media is using, is integrating both uh, Echo Canceller, the Echo Canceller for mobile, and the, the Echo Canceller that was made two years ago, the Echo Canceller delay agnostic, they were saying, what, that was the value. But now they came up with something new anyway, a new algorithm even better, because uh, there was some, uh, sometimes it was, it was having a big downside. It was altering the, I, I, they, they are explaining better than, I won't be going into the detail, but in PAT 2.1.0, they are explaining why this algorithm is better. My point is that there is a lot of uh, knowledge in WebRTC and lots of skills, and uh, it, they, uh, everybody may know that, but, uh, so here I'm just sharing an integration of their, uh, their echo canceller in uh, media streamer. But my, oh, here what I want to highlight, it's, it's kind of hard to strip the code and maintain it in another software. Because sometimes when you, you have to open to benefit from the latest patch and then you, you, your code is broken. 
So you need to update WebRTC, maintain the compatibility with WebRTC. Sometimes it's challenging, I think. That's what I saw in, uh, in MediaStreamer, uh, because uh, when, I, when, you were, when I was going to update the ASCM, then suddenly I needed to update other things, and it was, it was more work. Okay. This is just a side note on to, show, to see that we are already using WebRTC in other soft phones, but there may be a way to use it in different ways and completely compatible ways. Uh, so then NetTech, which we cannot see, is their jitter buffer in the decoded domain. So I, I, when I was working at Orange, I was lucky enough to work with some of their signal engineers specialized in audio, and they, they did have a look at NetTech. And they had great opinion about it, the way they were doing it. was doing fast accelerate. It was more evolved than, than other jitter buffers that were made by Orange. But maybe not as much as, maybe not the EVS. They're, they're really a flagship. I don't, know, I don't have any, uh, I don't know if EVS may be as good or better. I, but they had great opinion on it. So, and it's really challenging to do, and especially very difficult to test. And where WebRTC is also bringing something great here is they have billions of calls per month now, and they are gathering statistics from these calls. So this kind of testing, I almost know it's hard to do uh, the kind of testing that they will be able to do and that they are already doing. They did an A-B testing campaign with their echo canceller last year. So they can verify with some, uh, I don't know if they select the candidate though, it may be, uh, I don't think it's random. So here I'm just saying that we can control this. It's really easily from the API. Uh, when you are in using their, uh, their C++ API, you can just set the maximum buffer size. It's exposed, so you don't need to, 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 to change the code, their code. Another thing is that they are, it's hidden, again, because of this PDF, but they are supporting Microsoft uh, Edge ORTC. I'm just showing a commit where they, that they have done like in the past month. So they will deal with the complexity of being fully compatible. I mean, and probably Microsoft will have to align with them because they have the, the biggest market share now. So we can, I mean, all of this complexity is already taken care of by them. Um, it's almost certain it's, uh, I'm just, it's an assumption, of course, but I mean, uh, yes, it's a safe assumption. Um, and then their bandwidth estimator, of course, it was aimed at video, but they did say it was supposed to be activated for uh, audio as well. No, it doesn't seem like it is. I, I didn't have time to, I, w I, I did not went far enough to test it and make it work, see how it's working, but I can see it's there in the code. They are doing things like, you know, Opus was changed recently to support 120 milliseconds natively. It's not the fake, they don't, you don't generate twice 60 milliseconds and then you repacketize it. You can generate in Opus 1.2, it was introduced. So I can, I, we can see they know these things. So they know things. They know what's going on. And also, I'm sure they have good uh, collaboration with uh, Jean-Marc Vallin because he's working for Firefox. They have probably very good, but anyone can do that anyway. Opus is free, and Opus is well integrated in many other software. I'm not saying that. Uh, um, so so I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm working on, 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 on verifying what can be done, and here is where not. The state of my work in progress is in this diagram. So, yeah, I, I needed to use a, a real web browser, so I, I've, I've used a JS SIP, great SIP stack. I chose to use SIP, why? Because if my module is, if, my, uh, if the WebRTC gateway is supposed to gateway to SIP, maybe it's, uh, it's less complicated to use SIP on both sides. I don't know for sure yet, but I like Camelio anyway, and, uh, so I just wrote a little Camelio module to, um, to, to manage the SIP and extract the body and um, send the request, the offer to, to a peer connection listener. We'll, I will show you where this code is and where. So Camelio can, can, can forward the, uh, the SDP uh, from WebRTC and then WebRTC will just create the peer connection, generate the answer first, and then it will do uh, it will gen uh, create, generate the, the peer connection and do uh, everything else. So what I'm highlighting here is, is that there is a, a standard interface, the audio device module that can be used to access the media in real time, both on the transmit. It's like a sound card, in fact. For them, it's a sound card interface. So in behind that, you have uh, OpenSLS, all of these things, uh, Alza, uh, 
So they have an interface where you can take control of, of the media, but the decoded media only, though. So there, there may be a limitation here. And then what's in red, it's potential candidate for um, bridging the call. I decided to focus on connecting the browser. There was too much work. I was unable to, to bridge a call. I think on the second leg, it may even be possible to use WebRTC, in fact, because you can disable uh, the API lets you disable multiplexed RTP, RTCP, and you can also disable encryption, and then you can control ICE. So I'm not sure if there is anything else that is not compatible with the legacy SIP. So there may even be a way to have another. Uh, if not, I, I, of course, I'm a big fan of Media Streamer too. I may experiment with, with it, because I, I will explain why. I'm, a little bit later, I have some example where I already did transcoding with uh, media streamer too. Um, so yeah, where did I take the source code? And um, I cheated a little bit. I've used all the source code that was already there, and I took the pieces that were working and stick them together. So just to, I should even be more clear on, in my file that this is really not exactly the code that was provided. I did add some copyright to make sure I'm not confusing people that my code is not the code of a... Uh, um, but it's taken from their sample application, most of it, the peer connection client and the peer connection server and the conductor. In fact, the peer connection server is only a server for signaling. The, the peer connection client and conductor together, they, they drive the, the peer connection, what you need to do. Uh, they, they, they implemented everything in these two files. And then I took their file audio device module from the module directory. And I needed to modify it because this was, um, the, uh, it was not an audio device module, but it was an audio device generic. And you need to have an implementation, audio device implementation to create it. And the implementation is taking care of adding uh, extra things like a, a, a buffer, a, uh, an audio buffer, audio device buffer, or but oh, it's five minutes left, okay. So I was hoping to do a demo here because, um, um, and at the same time, some of the problem I, found, I face with trickle and uh, I see many people are facing them, they are easy to, to work around. Um, so you don't have to know everything about ICE and all of these RFCs, like WebRTC is usually doing it well, so only to troubleshoot you may need to, to know more. Um, so all my code is shared, and it can be built without forking WebRTC. This is how you, you create an audio device module by using their abstract-based class, and then you need to add your audio buffer yourself because you can't use the implementation. You have to provide the audio device. Um, here you can see in this constructor, if we can specify the audio device. Um, you can see it. Maybe. So your audio device has to be fully operational at this point. Uh, so before you, you need to, yeah, that's why you need to create the audio device uh, buffer before. And then I'm sharing also the code, the CAMIO module that can be used to drive this, even if it pro it's probably not useful for um, many people. Then again, I'm coming back to where I started from. Uh, the, the, the expertise in uh, audio quality is very high. They have 150 metrics. When I was working at Libon, the first thing we did was to do, uh, add some metrics to monitor everything. And I reported call by call to know what's going on. Uh, to, and then cross-check the statistics with the user ratings or the average length of call to verify if, if it's really uh, what is impacting the users. So WebRTC is already fully... Uh, rich with all of these metrics, so there is little work to do on this part of things also. So this I already spoke about it, yeah. So maybe I can do a demo then if I have five minutes, just to prove that um, I'm sure you're already convinced that this can be working, but... Um, If I go back to the little demo here, you can see that Camaleo is, re is re returning me SDP generated by, um, by um, WebRTC.
So I can call, disconnect, reconnect. The call signaling is already working. Now I'm reconnecting. You don't see it. This is hosted in packet in uh, New Jersey. So it's just it's running on a server, and you can play and record a file. So of course it's just uh, it's working on a server side now. Two minutes left. Okay. Well, um, what um, I think I was able to cover most of my uh, the argument that made me think that this is what's worth doing, and. Um, I know, yeah, let's, to conclude, sorry, I have to say, uh, there is many alternatives around that are working very well. This is an example of how to use a media stream or two to do bridging or transcoding. You can see how high level it can be. So even if it's a C application, it can be used as a high level application, in my opinion, because you only need a few functions to, to do everything. You have factories for everything. Now, I should say that there is a, uh, already an alternative software solution that we're built by and people are working hard for years, so this, my experiment is nothing compared to, uh, is no, nowhere near anything like production ready. So I'm just highlighting their, their work again. And uh, yeah, Claude Lamblin was the engineer were, that was providing feedback on uh, NetTech for us. She studied also the resamplers, the performance of various resamplers, um, and many other things. And yeah, so yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, you compile your application standalone. There is no need. You, you have to build WebRTC the libraries. You link to the